time for round two on the draw, and we have a pretty sweet hand with Nessian Curzo, Nylea's Disciple, and Bow of Nylea. Almost perfect mana also, so definitely a keeper, probably the best card we've seen so far. And we are also probably just going to run out the Curzo followed by the Disciple. The Bow is perfect on, on five mana as well. And apart from the additional green in its mana cost, compared to the cursor, there isn't really much reason to drop it on turn 3. Especially when we have a 3-3 three, three that we can play. That's a good 3-drop for us to see, because we have a strictly better one. And the Disciple of Phoenix could also be nice once your opponent is down to two cards in hand. Oh, maybe that's not happening too soon though. Bottom, top, draw two, land. Ah, uh, pretty off curve voyaging setter. Don't think that we want to be casting that. Just doesn't fit. Doesn't fit at all. Uh, if we draw a land, then we might be able to drop it also. But if it's a forest, then we probably just want to play the bow and activate it. So, yeah, the setter has to wait a little bit. On the other hand, it's probably the better play than time to feed. Oh, it looks like there's quite some blockers for our opponent now. Agent of Fade. Now oh, that's interesting. Okay, the options are Disciple of Phoenix, which isn't really doesn't really make sense with our opponent on six cards. We could be aggressive here, but that would only trade all of our creatures, which is kind of nice with the Agent of Fates now that I think about it. We can't really target it with time to feed yet, but that's definitely a good reason to try to get the board clear of creatures. It does make the bow a bit worse, but the bow is insane anyway, so... Okay, looks like we only traded for... Bayful Eilon, but that's still fine because now Agent of Fates is a lot better. Okay, but it's just dead. Let's see, if I attack with the curse, I'm still offering the trade with the Felhead Minotaur. I think that's still fine, but not amazing. So, if I want to get the bow active, I probably just keep the cursor around, drop the bow this turn, and then next turn I have the bow and the setter activation. Yeah, that, that looks better. The alternative would have been to just drop the setter this turn. But then I wouldn't have done anything else with my with my turn, which I didn't want. This also plays around any kind of annuls or other counter spells our opponent could have. We're definitely not blocking here. Our creature is a lot more powerful. Flash Mad Seed, interesting. Ashiok, even more interesting. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. Pretty good hit with Ashiok there. 
so we might be facing a Polokonaz starting next turn, basically. Yeah, we should probably get that Ashiok off the table, if possible. Let's see. Disciple of Phoenix can only look at two cards, which is which isn't enough. We can time to feed with Nessian Cursor killing Falheit Minotaur and attack Ashiog because Flash Mad Seed is going to be tapped. That would be an option to bring Ashiog down to one. Then it's going to be go back up to three, but that's still not enough to, to cast Polukonas, which is kind of the most important thing. I don't I don't want to face that on our opponent's side of the table. So yeah, I think that's what I have to do. Or right, creatures also have death touch, but that's not really important right now. Yep, that's what we're doing. So let's fight with these two. This gets tapped. Uh, now I actually have the option. I can go for the Satyr and only bring Ashiok down to two, but I definitely don't want it to go up to to go up to four, so Okay, this isn't isn't as bad. But it's still going to be difficult to play against the Ashiok here. Grey Merchant. That's fine. Looks like our opponent wants to double block the cursor, which is interesting because it has death touch, so it's going to kill both of our opponent's guys. Yeah, and we are just going to continue attacking because we want to get that Ashiok off the table. Opponent can't just block with only one creature because then the bow uh, lets our cursor survive. But Blocking with both is fine is fine with me. It's a, a very good trade, I think. So the disciple is clearly getting played here. We don't want to get that card from our opponent. That's a good one also. And now the question is if we want Voyaging Satyr in play, or if we want to make the Disciple larger. We still haven't really found a solution to Ashiok yet, but we are getting closer. I think what we want to do is make pump the Disciple, and then next turn we drop the Satyr and immediately rescue from the Underworld. Maybe the Agent of Fates, Agent of the Fates. That way the Flash Mad Seed won't be able to block and we get to deal some more damage. On the other hand, if we have the Satyr in play, we are going to have 6, 7, 8 mana and we only need those 5, so then we can activate the bow next turn. Yeah, it probably doesn't make too much of a difference. Just going to do that now, I think. Oh, yeah. I I didn't have to do that in, during my turn, but probably doesn't matter. Another Flash Mad Steed. It's a pretty bad card, but there isn't much I can do about it right now. I could also try to beat the Polokronos on our opponent's side of the board. That isn't completely unreasonable, but I still need to beat Ashiok because the exiling is going to kill me 
no matter what. But what I could do here is just attack uh, Ashiok without um, going for the all aggressive place. Nessian Asp is a good draw. Yeah, I'm actually just uh, going to attack Ashiok here. Knowing that our opponent doesn't have a good block. And I think that we are think that we are winning this that way. Now rescue from the underworld is still a nice backup plan. But we need to deal as much damage to Ashiok as possible. Voyaging Satyr might come in handy to threaten to threaten Ashiok uh, sounds more important than giving another creature plus one plus one. We are down to 15 cards, so we have to be really careful. On the other hand, if opponent only plus twos the Ashiok, he isn't going to be able to keep it alive. Okay. So at least we got rid of Ashiok that way. But I'm not sure why. Oh, was it, was it only on five? Yeah, possibly. Don't quite understand what's happening. Grey Merchant is pretty much strictly worse than... Strictly worse than Polychronos, I, I thought. Okay. Okay, yeah, so our opponent just misclicked with Ashiok, I suppose, and that was really awkward. Um, probably just paying too much for X and then losing his Planeswalker in the process. That's really unfortunate. Well, uh, we know what we're up against. A lot of uh, mediocre black creatures and a nice Planeswalker, so... Mm, we might want a little more evasion, maybe some early offense to to threaten threaten the planeswalker. That seems to be what we can do against Ashiok there. Don't really see much else that we would want. So an easy an easy swap would be taking out the. F uh, phalanx and putting in the harpy I'm not too sure if I want to play creatures of my own that are that only trade with flash mad seed because that somehow doesn't really seem like something that we should be trying to do we should be trying to have the better creatures and apart from Ashiok opponent hasn't really shown anything that's going to be dangerous for us I even like return phalanx because a 3-3 three, three, for two is better than all of the creatures he has shown. On the other hand, it's it's kind of difficult to find a, a worse card than Returned Phalanx in our in our pool. And well, Grey Merchant is something that we, which we could live without, um, which does make Rescue from the Underworld weaker as well. Though Grey Merchant is just probably not how we are going to to win this game, um, as it's the worst against Ashiok and. If the game goes longer, we should win anyway, as long as Ashiok isn't beating us. So putting out... Um, we could probably cut one of the Grey Merchants for one of the cheaper cards. Maybe Ferruca's Cure to, to um, pave the way should we have to kill an Ashiok. Let's try that. We are on the draw. Our hand is amazing. Not mulliganing. This is going to be really, really nice. So hopefully the setter lives. That way we could be out of the gates really fast with the disciple and then cursor plus Eilon or maybe 
maybe the death touch equip I don't really care about getting an additional devotion trigger so I'm just going to run out the more expensive card now and the the bunch of three threes that we have should put our opponent in, in trouble flying lifelink harpy that's pretty good we have the Furikas Cure for that, so... Not a problem. Okay, let's see. We can Furikas Cure and Blood Toll Harpy. We can only play the Harpy and then see what happens. Or we can Nessian Cursor and Furikas Cure. Yeah, Cursor and Cure looks looks the most powerful to me. It can't really be bad to cast Ferricus Cure on on the Lifelink Harpy. And we still get to have two creatures on the board that dominate what our opponent is doing and might also lead to um, some awkward blocks from our opponent's side of the board. Keepsake Gorgon is pretty nice, but I'm willing to spend my turn uh, Lash of the Ripping Bat, if opponent allows it. Question is if he has much of a choice. Okay, yeah, he actually takes the damage, so he takes 6 here. And we can play the Harpy. And we might also just want to get the Eidolon into play. It's a card that is going to be able to attack, which could be quite valuable. And we have we have plays for days, so not worried about the not worried about bestowing too much. Expect my opponent to have at least one more land, because otherwise keeping back the Gorgon doesn't make too much too much sense. Okay, read the bones is, is an option as well. Bottom top for the scrying. And now the question is if there is something else coming down. There is Baleful Eidolon. That's a good one. Uh, we still have the Lash of the Whip play available to us though. Don't really see... don't think that a blue mana is going to interfere with that. So I'm going to continue being as aggressive as possible. And if Keepsight Gorgon doesn't block this turn again, then we can just look at our opponent's hand with the Disciple of Phoenix. I'm assuming that the Keepsake Gorgon alone isn't going to beat us, but that might be a mistake. A Mountain, an Unicorn, and Asphodel Wanderer. That's quite interesting. So... Pawn is on three. I think we are just going to kill him pretty much. And I expect him to activate monstrosity, but if I take the mountain, that's that might just not be happening. Then he just plays these crap creatures and we kill him with the harpy. Yeah, let's just try to kind of screw screw him out of the land. No, he drew a mountain. So now he gets to kill Blood Troll Harpy with the with the Gorgon trigger. Okay, attacking creatures I uh, control have death touch and I get to put some additional counters on stuff. That has to be good. This is a pretty easy attack. The setter is going to stay back to put a plus one plus one counter on the Disciple of Phoenix, although it isn't much of a difference compared to just attacking with everything. Okay. 
Okay. If we hadn't drawn the bow, we would have attacked it in the same in the same way, and then if he blocks the cursor, which he has to because of the uh, the three power, then we lash off the whip the gorgon, and I think we still we still easily win. Okay, now opponent can play his two small creatures, maybe something else. Okay, he isn't going to bother. So that was uh, quite fast, quite nice. Um, Ashiok only the only problem, and then our opponent somehow misclicked. Although I think we were in a favorite position uh, anyway, but of course. Um, if our opponent pluses again, maybe has a play, then, then it's a lot worse. Okay, see you next round.